Yes. Perfect. So uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Patrick Walsh, and I'm a final year medical student at University College Cork. Tonight, I'll be presenting to you my research on health service use and associated costs attributable to diabetes in the Mitchellstown cohort study. Uh, this was funded by the Health Research Board Summer Studentship Programme. In 2001, Professor Paul Zimmet concluded in his pivotal study, The Global and Societal Implications of the Diabetes Epidemic, that diabetes would be the most challenging health problem of the 21st century. He certainly wasn't wrong. At the time, the worldwide prevalence of diabetes was just under 5%. As of the end of last year, it was estimated that 463 million people worldwide were living with diabetes. In other words, a global prevalence of almost 10%. Diabetes is now the third leading cause of years lived with a disability worldwide, and its impact on health systems and national economies is of growing concern. In 2019, Europe was the region with the third highest diabetes-related healthcare expenditure, with the entire global diabetes-related healthcare expenditure estimated to be 760.3 billion US dollars. For perspective, that's twice the GDP of Ireland for that same year. Ireland itself has an estimated diabetes prevalence of about 8% among middle-aged adults. This is largely due to type 2 diabetes. Traditionally, type 2 diabetes in Ireland has been haphazardly managed, with some patients receiving treatment exclusively in general practice and others exclusively in hospital. With the establishment of the National Clinical Programme for Diabetes, however, um, those with type 2 diabetes now receive structured care. The programme mandates that those with uncomplicated type 2 diabetes be managed exclusively in general practice and that those with complicated type 2 diabetes be managed between primary and secondary care. In order to further inform health policy such as this, it is vital that experts have the most up-to-date information regarding prevalence and cost figures. With this in mind, the aim of this study is to estimate the health service use and associated costs attributable to diabetes in middle-aged Irish adults. This study is a cross-sectional quantitative analysis data from the Mitchellstown cohort rescreen study. This study was the second phase of the much larger Cork and Kerry Diabetes and Heart Disease study. Those involved in phase two, or the Mitchellstown cohort study, were recruited from a single large primary care centre, the Living Health Clinic. Data collection was conducted between 2016 and 2017. Our outcome of interest for this study was health service use in the previous 12 months. This included GP visits, A&E visits, hospital admissions, outpatient visits and day procedures undergone. Our exposure of interest was diabetes. We also examined a number of other variables so as to determine the cohort's population characteristics and health behaviours. One point to note is that for health service use, we looked at those who had a doctor diagnosis of diabetes. But when estimating the prevalence of diabetes, we defined diabetes as having a doctor diagnosis or having blood sugar levels which met the criteria for diabetes. This was done so as to more accurately estimate the prevalence of diabetes. Pearson's chi-square test was used to analyze the difference in proportion of people attending each health service, and students' t-test was used to analyze the difference in the mean number of visits to each health service. We used negative binomial regression to model the association between diabetes and the frequency of health service use, and average marginal effects were estimated for each model. Full data was available for almost the entire cohort, and so a complete case analysis was carried out. All data analysis was completed using Stata version 16, which is a general purpose statistical software package. The mean cost per person with diabetes was calculated by multiplying the mean number of visits per annum by the average unit costs of each health service. The incremental cost per person with diabetes was calculated by multiplying the average marginal effects by the average unit cost of each health service. The figures for each health service were acquired from the health pricing office and are displayed on screen. These costs were then extrapolated to the total population with diabetes to calculate the incremental health service costs. The total population with diabetes was estimated by applying the prevalence of doctor diagnosis diabetes in this sample to the most recent Irish census figures. The following is a table displaying the differences between those with and without diabetes. The main points to note here are that the prevalence of diabetes in the sample was 10.44%. The prevalence of undiagnosed diabetes was 3.08%. 38.13% of those with diabetes had a macrovascular complication, 20.86% of those with diabetes had a microvascular complication, and those with diabetes were older, had a lower portion of females, had lower levels of educational attainment, lower levels of income, and lower self-reported health statuses. 
Those with a diagnosis of diabetes had significantly higher primary health service use, but this wasn't reflected across secondary health service use. Displayed on screen now are the results of our multivariable negative binomial regression models, which measure the independent association that a doctor diagnosis of diabetes has on health service use. The main points to note here are that a diagnosis of diabetes was associated with additional GP visits in almost all models, and in fully adjusted models, it was associated with 33% increase in GP visits per annum. So what is the economic burden of this additional health service use? Well, the mean cost of health service use per person with a diabetes diagnosis was estimated to be €1,597.8, compared to €1,352.67 for those without a diabetes diagnosis. The total incremental health service costs associated with diabetes was approximately €47 million. Euro. But what are the implications of these results? Well, there are two possible interpretations. The first of these is that the low level of secondary care utilization among those with diabetes may be attributable to the success of the Diabetes in General Practice Initiative and the National Clinical Program for Diabetes. However, these low levels of secondary health service use may also be due to prolonged waiting times to see an endocrinologist publicly in Cork. This second inference would have significant long-term cost implications as untreated and complicated diabetes have much higher cost associations. But whether this is a success story for Irish health services or an indication of the urgent need for further Ready. investment into diabetes, the bottom line remains the same. And that is that further research is urgently required. I would like to thank the following institutions and co-authors of this study for their work and continued assistance on the project. Attached is a complete list of all reference material presented this evening. Finally, I would like to thank all of those at the Royal Academy of Medicine involved for organizing this event tonight. I know it couldn't have been easy. And if you have any queries regarding this research, I would encourage you to email me at the email address listed below.